In this video, we're going to cover how to add a cross-platform leaderboard to a project in Unity 3D. And we're going to achieve this by making web requests to an installation of Strapi. If you haven't heard of Strapi before, you can watch my video on learning Strapi in 12 minutes. Let's dive into a Unity project that I've created for this video. You can see we have two buttons, one that starts a timer and one that stops a timer. We also have some text that displays the timer to the user. The code behind all of this is right here. Let's quickly go through it. At the top, I've made a class called Leaderboard Entry, which stores the current time of the timer and the name of the player. This can be easily serialized to JSON and posted as is, as long as the variable names match those in our API. More on this later. In the stopwatch behavior below, we have a text variable named timer, so we can modify the text in our GUI at runtime. We also have an instance of a leaderboard entry, so we can update the time and the name of the player. And finally, we have a boolean named running. This controls whether the timer should be running or not. On to our methods. We have the stop method, which is hooked up to the stop button. This stops the timer. We have our begin method, which is hooked up to the start button, which resets and starts the timer. It also creates a new leaderboard entry and sets the player name. We also have the update method, which keeps the timer updated and also updates our interface, but only if the timer is actually running. Let's quickly demonstrate. Great, it works. Now, Let's make it so that when we click the stop button, the time is posted to our online leaderboard. Let's move on to the Strapi admin interface. We're going to create a content type for our leaderboard. Let's call it time, and it's going to store the player's name and the time that they achieved. As for the fields, these need to match our variable names in our leaderboard entry class. Let's save up and wait for Strapi to restart before quickly checking to see if the content type was created successfully. Before we head back to our Unity project, let's open up all the permissions for our actions. This is not good practice, but it will let us get on with our demonstration. Now, back to our Unity project. We need some code to post our time to the leaderboard, so let's create a method called post to leaderboard, and we'll call this from the stop method. We're going to post our data in JSON format, and an easy way to do that is using the JSON utility. We type JSON utility dot to JSON and pass in the object of the time matching our Strapi content type. Now we create a Unity web request, point it at the URL of our Strapi API, and make sure it's configured to post. You can encounter all kinds of issues when posting JSON data for Unity. So here's one way to successfully post the data without any issues. We're going to create a byte array from the UTF-8 encoding of our JSON string. We're then going to create an upload handler and pass in that byte array. Then we will explicitly set chunked transfer to false. And then we're going to set our content type to JSON. All that's left now is to call send on the request object. Let's run a couple of tests and see if this works. Great, everything's working as expected. We can now use this API to interact with our leaderboard from any platform that can send web requests. Of course, there are many improvements we can make and it's not ready just yet. Some things to consider. Anyone who knows the web address of our API can post fake times to the leaderboard, so we need to have a look at some form of security. We may want to update a player's time instead of posting a new entry every time. And we may want to list this leaderboard within our game itself. If you'd like me to cover some of the above or similar topics in another video, let me know in the comments. I hope it's been useful.